Hi guys, Marcus here and welcome to Chinese Entertainment Update, November 26th, 2020. I release episodes every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday and this is episode 313. Now because I use Chinese names quite a bit on my show, if you want the English spelling of them, click CC for English subs. I create them myself. In today's episode, my first take on To Love with Kenny Lin and Gai Yuexi and Darren Wang and Xiao Zhan's humorous meeting last year. My first, a happy Thanksgiving to all of you in the US. I hope your Thanksgiving table is full of your favorite foods and surrounded by your favorite people. May your hearts be as full as your bellies. Here's what's recently premiered. Mermaid Prince is a modern drama starring Li Xiangzhe and Esther Wu and it premiered yesterday, November 25th. Esther Wu plays a magazine columnist who was once rescued by a merman and thus has always believed in the existence of them. In fact, she suspects that a new acquaintance of hers, a dashing lifeguard played by Li Xiangzhe, is one. Comedy and romance ensues as she sets out to confirm her suspicions. As much of the drama happens by the sea, there's plenty of beach activities, so expect a fair share of pretty looking people in bathing suits, a la Baywatch. The drama is slated for 24 episodes and is available in glorious 1080 with English subs on WeTV. Our Inverse Youth is a modern drama starring Neil Chow and Sika and it premiered earlier today. It follows an aspiring MMA fighter and his childhood friend and aspiring musician as they push each other to achieve their dreams. The drama is slated for 40 episodes and is available on Yuku, no English subs at the moment. And that's it for recently premiered dramas. Here now is Incomparable Beauty, which recently started filming. Incomparable Beauty is an upcoming modern drama starring Chen Xiao and Guli Naja and a couple of days ago they held their booting ceremony. The two stars play ex-lovers who break up after an 8 year relationship only to meet again on opposite ends of a business negotiation 3 years later. Guli Naja gets many of these female lead characters who are just drop dead gorgeous. This drama is Exhibit A, I mean the title is Incomparable Beauty. Personally, I think she looks terrific, whether in modern or ancient garb. A couple of months ago, she wrapped filming the costume drama Bright Moon of Great Tang or Da Tang Mingyue and she looks great in that too. But I was just thinking about it and I haven't finished any of her dramas ever. Like literally all of her dramas that I've checked out, I've dropped quite early on. 10 years late and Return the World to You are just a couple of examples. Now that's not to say that I dropped them because of her, it's just that these dramas didn't retain my interest enough for me to want to finish them. And I just find that a bit of an odd coincidence. But then again, I can be quite picky, especially now when we have so many Chinese dramas for us to feast on, I have no problem dropping one if it doesn't start to impress by episode 4. And that's the magic number for me, 4. It's usually make or break for a drama by the end of the 4th episode. What's your magic number? Or do you not have one and just go by feel? Or do you go by the happy ending system where you find out if a drama has a happy ending or not and if it doesn't then you don't even bother starting and if it does then you power your way through no matter what because the payoff is worth it. Let us know what your system is in the comment section below. Chen Xiao on the other hand, I have finished watching one of his dramas from beginning to end. It's Nothing Gold Can Stay in which he starred with Sun Li. That was a terrific drama that I can recommend to anyone. Chen Xiao recently wrapped filming Being a Hero with Wang Yipo. He barely rested a couple of weeks and it's now on to incomparable beauty. Chen Xiao has a whopping 10 dramas awaiting release. He's been a busy man. Among them is Healer of Children, which premieres in a few days. Healer of Children is an upcoming medical drama starring Chen Xiao and Olivia Wang and they've officially announced a November 30th premiere. It follows dedicated pediatricians and their challenges in their work and in office politics. And moving on, here's my first take on To Love. To Love is a modern drama starring Kenny Lin and Gai Yuexi and it premiered on November 19th. It is slated for 40 episodes and 22 of them are out on Yuku. 
Vicky is streaming it with English subs. Last I checked, they're up to episode 5. YouTube has it with English subs as well, but they're Google translated. I'm on episode 14, and here's my first take on the drama. I will keep the major spoilers out of it and just talk about the big picture. Kenny Lin plays Yen Qing, a former anti-narcotics officer who returns to the force for an undercover mission to investigate his friend's death. He infiltrates a drug organization and will sacrifice everything to bring justice for his deceased friend. Along the way, he meets Gai Yuexi's character, Ji Xiaoo, and promptly falls in love with her. Ji Xiaoo is a kind-hearted cafe owner who wants nothing but to succeed in life and to help others along the way. One of those she helps is Zhan Yu, a young and talented violinist played by Li Qing. A murder happens within the drug organization and a detective played by Du Chuan steps in to investigate. He interrogates Xi Xiaoo who tells her version of the story and Yan Qing who tells his. And that's pretty much the structure of every episode so far. It's divided into two sections. First it's Xi Xiaoo's story, then it's Yan Qing's. I'm usually not a big fan of dramas that don't tell the story in a traditional linear way, but this one seems to work for me. I find Yan Qing absolutely hilarious. He is dogged and determined, and when he falls in love with Ji Xiaoo, stops at nothing to get her affection, even though she's having none of it initially. Eventually, he wins her heart, but shortly after, circumstances cause him to give her the cold shoulder. With the tables turned, she now can't get him out of her head. 14 episodes in and the situation is quite delicate. I'm enjoying the series at the moment and I'm looking forward to more. The actors especially are a joy to watch. The two lead actors, Kenny Lin and Gai Yuexi, show great chemistry in their scenes. And this is a bit of a side dish to the segment, but did their on-screen chemistry spill into their real lives? Apparently so, according to recent rumors. This is on account of a video that's been circulating that shows the two at dinner acting very intimately. The video shows Kenny's face quite clearly, but it doesn't explicitly show the girls. If it is indeed Ka Yuexi, then I think there's no doubt that it's a real-to-real -real romance. But anyway, back to the drama. Like I said, I'm enjoying it at the moment, and I can't wait to see how the story progresses. Hopefully the English subs keep coming so international audiences can enjoy it as well. And for the final segment, here's something I found that I thought you guys might enjoy. Prince of Bo and Ji Chong embrace in a meeting last year. This is actually an old story which happened in July of last year. I just thought I'd share it with you guys because the pictures resurfaced recently and just as well as the stars of the wolf are getting lots of attention at the moment. The pictures were taken at Chinese entertainment site Sena's office. Xiao Zhan was actually there for an event with Wang Yipo for The Untamed. Darren Wang was also in the building for an event for the movie The Rookies. Here he is, all smiles. Upon seeing Darren, Xiao Zhan rushed over and they gave each other a hug. There was a brief exchange in which Darren joked that he was in The Untamed and Xiao Zhan was in The Rookies. Xiao Zhan also teased Darren for not knowing the name of his new show, The Untamed. Although enemies on screen, the two seem to get along just fine in real life. This little meeting brought a smile to my face because the two had great rapport. Darren is a bit of a jokester and Xiao Zhan was right there with him, which made for a nice humorous moment. So anyway, I'm up to episode 6 of The Wolf. Things are happening and Wolf Boy or the Prince of Bo is still plenty pissed off at Princess Ma Chai Xing after the way they left it all those years ago. He even left her soaking after she fell into a pond. At this point I can't see how the two can really ever settle their differences considering the role he and his team played in her father's death. I'm fully expecting a scene somewhere down the road where she finds out and all hell breaks loose. But anyway, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, I'll just wait to find out. 
And that's it for this episode. If you want to check out the t-shirt and other Chinese drama merchandise, there's a link to it in the description below. This show would not be possible without your support, so I thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed it, do subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification button for more updates. If you'd like to contribute, check out my Patreon page, where for a dollar more a month, I'll answer one of your questions at the end of one of my YouTube episodes. So stay safe, and as always, I wish you clear blue skies, good health, and happiness. Until next time, cheers!